Richard Sapone White and I, um, Michael Bach, we're both from Oregon State University. And we had the wonderful opportunity to travel to Nigeria this past November um, for a two week stay. Um, and we'll be describing our experience there today. Um, is everyone able to, to hear us? Excellent. I just remembered when I saw Richard's, uh, um, that Richard wore his, uh, his shirt that, um, that the Federal University of Abiyakuta um, made for us. Uh, they made a suit for us um, that we wore on our, our last day uh, in, uh, in Nigeria. And uh, I wore a different shirt that I purchased there so you could get an idea of uh, the dress that uh, um, of the of the region. I'll start by saying "eshegan," uh, which is one of the few phrases phrases that I learned um, while I was there. Uh, that's a Yoruba phrase for uh, "thank you very much for joining us today." We will try to give you a sense today of, uh, of what our time there was like, both professionally and personally. Um, Richard and I will talk about the, uh, the OSU and the Federal University of Agriculture in Nigeria uh, sister library relationship. Uh, we will talk about our experience at the Liske and Aulin conferences. Uh, that's Association of Women Librarians in Nigeria and I have forgotten what Liske stands for. Um, maybe Richard can uh, remember. It's, um, it stands for uh, Libraries, Information Scientists, and Cybernautics in the Era of the Knowledge Economy. Thank you, thank you. Cybernautics was a, a, a term that I heard a few times there that I, I wasn't previously familiar with. Uh, we'll talk, and then we'll talk about our consultation and training at the university, and uh, and uh, and a little bit about the Nigerian culture. You can advance the slide. I don't, I don't know why I'm not able to. Thank you. Uh, people are surprised to learn that Nigeria is the most populous country in Africa and the seventh most populous country in the world. Um, when you're there, this comes as no surprise, believe me. Um, uh, you see people everywhere, on the roads, um, uh, on the sides of roads. Um, it's, it's very clearly a, an extremely a heavily populated uh, country. Nigeria is an oil-rich nation, but is plagued by corruption. The country lacks infrastructure in terms of roads, water, electricity, uh, and internet, uh, all of which is required to support uh, development. The staff at the guest house where we stayed were anxious to inform me that they earn between 21,000 and 30,000 Naira per month. Uh, which translates to between 70 and 100 US dollars per month. Um, it's a very poor country. Uh, Abiyakuta is a city of approximately one half million people situated about 60 miles north of the city of Lagos and 10 miles from the Federal University of Abiyakuta where we stayed. It is 10 miles, the university is 10 miles distant from Abiyakuta, but it takes at least an hour to get there um, during the day due to the road conditions and the number of people and animals on the roads. It is, uh, Abiyakuta is the capital of Ogun State, also known as Yoruba Land and Egbo Land. The northern half of the country, as you can see on the map there, uh, is uh, is populated by the Hausa and Fulani Fulani ethnic tribes. Um, the northern half is largely Muslim, 
um, and generally less educated, uh, less industrialized um, also. The southern half of the country of Nigeria is Muslim, uh, I'm sorry, is mostly Christian and better educated. The Yoruba people or ethnic tribe uh, is native to the southwest of the country and the Igbo people are native to the south central and the southeast part of the country. Richard and I arrived on fri a Friday late afternoon in November and uh, two Federal University of Nigeria, uh, Federal University of Agriculture in Nigeria employees uh, met us at the airport and uh, they were anxious to, to feed us a meal that one of them prepared and we ate a, a delicious uh, dinner of, meat, of beans, rice, chicken and stew. Um, and they, uh, there was a driver um, who drove us to, uh, to Abia Kuta. Um, it took about four hours to, to travel the 60 miles to Abia Kuta to give you an idea of, uh, of, of the highways. Um, there are no uh, traffic lanes on the highways. Um, and it's, uh, uh, you get places uh, however you can manage to get there. Um, the drivers uh, take great liberties um, in uh, uh, moving uh, or, or getting places. Um, the national language of Nigeria is English, which serves as the written language. The newspapers that we uh, that we saw were all in English. In Abiyakuta and Lagos, uh, Yoruba is spoken, along with Pidgin English. And it is, uh, it is not at all decipherable to an English speaker. Um, the people of Abiyakuta are primarily Protestant, although uh, there is a large Muslim population, not only in the north, but throughout the country. Um, they are an extremely religious people. Um, I didn't meet anyone during my time there who didn't attend a church regularly, and they were very curious to know uh, both Richard and, and, and my beliefs. Um, and that was uh, uh, often the topic of conversation um, is uh, religious beliefs. Famous people from Abiyakutu you may have heard of include Wole Soyinka, the Nobel, uh, Nobel Laureate of Literature, and Fela Kuti, uh, the pioneer of Afro beat. to mention the uh, the sister library goals, um, the goals of our sister library relationship. Lori Bridges, an OSU librarian, and Nike Ornifade, uh, the director of libraries, established the sister library relationship with, uh, with the Federal University. They wrote an article that appeared in the IFLA journal that describes the goals of the two libraries in establishing the sister library relationship. The goals include uh, those listed here to raise the awareness of staff about issues and needs facing libraries internationally, to inspire cross-cultural competence of librarians and other staff through networking opportunities, to share information, resources, and expertise between staff with similar responsibilities, to identify trends in librarianship across borders in order to improve library services to users, and to share technological expertise. So let me provide a little bit of the timeline of events over the last uh, few years, last five years. Um, so in 2015, um, at the ALA annual conference in San Francisco, uh, Nikkei and Lori uh, Bridges uh, decided to create this sister library relationship. Uh, Michael, can you go back a, a slide? Yeah. Okay. Um, so over the next few years, our libraries signed an MOU, uh, Memorandum of Understanding, and conducted a few activities together, including having uh, Nikkei visit OSU for a week and rotate through our various departments to learn about our library operations. Um, she really wanted OSU staff to come to FUNAB 
uh, to see their library and to do some training. Uh, ultimately, we agreed um, to make um, supporting their um, institutional repository installation uh, the focus of that visit. Uh, there are relatively few institutional repositories in Nigeria. So in 2018, I wrote a grant pro proposal to fund travel expenses for three people from OSU to travel to FUNAB. Uh, funding was received from the Engineering Information Foundation. Um, FUNAB agreed to provide local transportation as well as room and board. So the EIF grant was primarily for um, travel um, to Nigeria. Two of the folks that were initially recruited for this trip ended up canceling out on us um, during the summer of 2019. And so I was very happy to recruit uh, Michael uh, to join this project. Um, I also do want to thank uh, Josh Gum, who used to be at the OSU Libraries, who provided help installing the digital repository software on the FUNAB um, server. What I didn't realize at the time that we um, wrote that first grant was that in order to go to Nigeria, you need to have a visa uh, already uh, when you land there. And that, that visa has to have biometric data uh, encoded in it, uh, fingerprints and, and photos. So um, we needed to get a second grant, um, which we received from OSU libraries, to pay for Michael and me to go to Los Angeles to apply for the Nigerian visa. That happened a couple of months before we actually made the trip to Nigeria. So with all our uh, funding and, and arrangements in hand, we traveled in November 2019 to spend two weeks in Abiokuta. Uh, next slide. So before we continue, I do want to recognize uh, the agencies that funded the travel. Uh, Engineering Information Foundation, as I said, paid for our airfare and some other travel expenses. And the OSU Lundin Fund provided us with um, our trip to Los Angeles to get our visas. Uh, so thank you to uh, both of those entities and of course to FUNAB itself for providing us with the transportation and room and board. Okay, next slide. So the first week that we were at FUNAB, we attended two library conferences on campus. The first was the one shown in this slide, um, which um, I know Michael already mentioned, the Association of Women Librarians in Nigeria. Okay, next slide. My presentation focused on two projects of mine. The first, which I've uh, presented before um, at uh, various conferences, including ALA Midwinter last year. Um, so that, uh, that focused on um, my project to ensure that all Oregon Indian tribes were represented in LC subject headings. I described the differences between historical Indian tribes and federal federally recognized tribes. And then I reported on constructing subject headings um, so uh, I could propose those to LC and get those approved. And about a half dozen of those subject headings have been appro approved so far. And I'm, I've still got a few that I'm, I'm hoping to complete this uh, summer. So I added some slides to my presentation at FUNAB that talked about um, subject headings for Nigerian ethnic groups, because it turns out that, um, at least according to Wikipedia, there are 250 ethnic groups in Nigeria, of which only uh, about 90 uh, are present in LCSH. The second project that I talked about was um, creating subject headings for f what are called future foods, crops that the World Wildlife Fa Fund has identified as being environmentally friendly and requiring few external inputs and easily cultivated but packed with nutrients. I mentioned some Nigerian crops that are in need of authorized subject headings and how Nigerian libraries could contribute subject headings to LCSH 
uh, so that resources on those topics are easier to find. They were very aware that LCSH does not always meet their needs for subject headings and were very excited about the possibility of contributing subject headings themselves. So after I gave my presentation, the floor was open for questions. So one th thing I learned very quickly was that Nigerians don't know very much about American Indians. Um, I was asked if I was talking about Indians from the Indian subcontinent. Uh, when I mentioned that there were over 500 Indian tribes in the United States, each with its own language, they were very surprised. Uh, they thought that everyone in the US spoke English and we all looked the same. I was also asked why Indians were put on reservations because I talked for a little bit about reservations. So I had a lot of explaining to do and trying to do some um, off the top of my head uh, uh, history teaching. They were very excited to think that they could contribute to LCSH. To do that, they do need to have access to classification web uh, in order to submit authority record proposals, but they were very dismayed to find out that the price of a subscription was well beyond what any of their individual libraries could afford. When I met with FUNAB st staff during the following week, uh, I offered to serve as a funnel for subject heading proposals that they wanted to make and spent time doing a training session with them on how to prepare a proposal. And I'll talk about that a little bit later in, in our uh, presentation. Michael, you're muted. Um, Richard gave two presentations at the Least Gay Conference that followed the uh, Association for Wh Women Librarians in Nigeria conference. He was asked to repeat the presentation that he gave at that conference, and he also presented on framing the future, how RDA, linked data, and BibFrame will change the future of libraries. I presented at the Least Gay Conference on preparing academic libraries to take on digital library services, such as uh, creating digital collections, institutional repositories, data management, and other things, discussing my experience building these services at OSU. Um, at the Least Gay Conference dinner, uh, FUNAB, theater students performed a regional uh, folk uh, tale that was followed by music from an Afrobeat band of FUNAB student musicians um, and also dancing. I found it very interesting that attendees from different regions of the country uh, who were attending the conference danced quite differently um, with different movements and, and steps. Um, so I, I, I really enjoyed learning those with them and uh, um, and it was interesting, you could see the different uh, people from different regions, you could tell um, that they were from those different regions based on the way they danced. Muslim and Christian prayers were said before the beginning of conference days, before meals, and at the farewell party on our last day. And I'd like to pass this next slide on to Mr. Chapon White. Uh, who can explain the significance of this name to us? Okay, so um, let's see. The, the day after that um, uh, dancing and, and music, we went on a tour of Abiokuta, and one of the places we went to, which you can see in these two pictures, was the Alake's Palace. The Alake is the king of the Egbas. Egbas are a, a clan of the Yoruba. Um, and I need to explain something first because earlier in that week, um, every day of, that, of those two conferences, um, I was told that there was a neighborhood in Abiokuta called Shapon. And Shapon spelled S-A-P-O-N just like my name, uh, part of my name. Um, 
in fact, I wasn't just told this once. I think every person had to come up to me and tell me, and with great excitement, that um, there was a place called, there was a neighborhood in Abiokuta called Chapon. Um, so on our visit to the uh, Alake's palace, we were uh, met by these folks who are, uh, we never met the Alake himself, but we, we met the court officials. Um, there's a court that happens here. It's like a civil court where the Alake serves as the, the judge and decides cases. Anyway, these officials were, you know, gave us the history of the building and they told us a little bit about the functioning of the court. And then um, when they were done with their little presentation, uh, Nikkei got up and introduced our group. There were a bunch of us, not just me and, and Michael. Um, but of course, she introduced me and Michael first because we were like visiting dignitaries. We also kind of stood out because we were the only white people there. Um, and when she got to my name, of course, she said, she introduced me as Mr. Chapon White. And they got very excited. And the uh, fellow in the white that you see on the, on the right, he shook my hand, uh, broke into a big smile, and he said that we were brothers, uh, which was really very sweet. Um, and then, although they had been very formal during the presentation time, as you can probably tell from these pictures, they, everybody had big grins and people were um, shaking hands and they all wanted pictures with us and, and that sort of thing. Um, I do have to say that I think after a while, Michael got a little bit jealous and he was trying to adopt the name Itoku, which is another um, neighborhood in, in Abeokuta, but I, I don't think it really caught on. <laughs> um, on our city tour, I'll also mention that we, we also visited the oldest Anglican church in Nigeria um, and also the Fela Kuti uh, House Museum, the, the home where uh, the musician grew up. Okay, back to you, Mike. Thank you, Richard. Um, weekends were very quiet for us. Um, the university is almost entirely a commuter campus and is set off quite a distance from town, as I mentioned. We had no transportation of our own and the hotel staff wouldn't allow us anywhere unaccompanied um, and without the express approval of our library hosts. I think they were very concerned about our security, although I never, uh, I never at any time felt, uh, felt the least bit uh, concerned about my security. And I spent an extra week in Nigeria after our visit in Abiyakuta. Um, I spent a week in Lagos and I also was felt very, very safe there. Although there was much concern on the part of our hosts uh, in uh, my taking advantage of my time in Nigeria to visit Lagos on my own. Um, we spent many hours at the guest house on campus where we were lodged. Um, on the second Monday of our visit, we were there there was a national holiday due to it being Muhammad's birthday, a Muslim holiday, of course. Uh, Nikkei's driver drove us to Ibadan, which is a city of about 3 million people, where we met her brother, a doctor at the medical school there. Uh, Ibadan University, or University of Ibadan, is considered one of the two top universities in the country, the other being, I believe, Lagos University. We visited uh, the university zoo um, and we picked up Nikkei's mother at her home, uh, which was also Nikkei's childhood home. Uh, as we were leaving her childhood home, he pointed out some objects under the stairs. There was a huge stone mortar and pestle like the one you see there, uh, photographed there, um, as well as a large wooden pounding stick and a wooden table. Nikkei explained to us that they belonged to her family and had been used for preparing food, but now they used machines. And they, she was very excited about that. Um, and it kind of gives you a sense of how, um, how behind things are there um, in many respects, uh, where blenders seem to be new to many of them, 
or at least the ability to afford a blender um, for many there is relatively uh, relatively recent. So the second week we um, were given a tour of the new Bay, uh, the Deep Bay Library, which is in the center of campus. Uh, you can see it here. Its structure is based on uh, traditional uh, Nigerian or maybe Yoruba um, architecture. We've got a tour and I'll show you some of the places in the building there. Um, this slide shows uh, Michael at work in the office space that we were given. Um, our office space was one of only two rooms in the in the building that were air conditioned. Uh, the computer servers were in that area and so that's why they were air conditioned. They do use um, generators but even with generators uh, there were long periods of time with no power at all and that happened every day. You never knew when the power was going to go off suddenly. At the guest house I would imagine that the power was out about half the time and it was extremely hot. Uh, it was often over, over 100, or at least it felt like it was over 100, and sometimes felt like it was in the upper 110s. Um, it was also very humid there. It cooled off a little bit at night, um, but I, I'm imagining since this was near the equator, uh, this kind of weather isn't that unusual. The other room that was air conditioned in the building was the director's office. The director, um, uh, who is uh, Nike, um, is accompanied everywhere she goes by someone who carries her, her bags. She has a company car, as uh, Michael mentioned in the earlier slide. The car is nice and air conditioned, um, and uh, the dr there's a driver uh, who drives her everywhere. Even on that day trip that we made to Ibadan, um, we had use of that vehicle and the driver also. The society there in, in Nigeria is extremely hierarchical and there's um, a lot of formality and a lot of class consciousness too. Next slide. Okay, so in the library, you can see the circulation desk here. There, uh, ILS is Koha, which is open source software and it's used uh, around the world. Because of frequent um, electricity failures though, they have to maintain a manual checkout system side by side with the ILS system. Next slide, yeah. With electricity down so often, multiple times every day, it makes sense to maintain a card catalog uh, of all of their holdings. Note that they don't have an integrated card catalog there were separate cabinets for subjects, authors, and titles. Doing everything both online and manually is duplication of effort, but under their circumstances with the electricity going out so often, it was really a necessity. Next slide. This is the computer lab and also the automation department, all in one uh, room there. Um, the only people who had offices were the department heads in the library. Uh, librarians didn't have offices, but instead worked on the floors or in the stacks or wherever their units were located. Automation librarians and staff worked in the computer lab shown here, where there were three or four uh, staff computers and 20 or so computers for library users. If the staff computers were all uh, taken up, the staff would use the, the student computers. Next slide. And over to you. Unfortunately, I didn't get a good photo of the cereals department um, and periodicals room. Uh, it was very old fashioned. Uh, all print periodicals were housed in the periodical room and were not available for checkout. Most were not bound. Um, there were Nigerian and some foreign uh, newspapers available in this room. Um, they also had access to several online databases, EBSCOhost, 
and others on computers in this room. Librarians worked in the stacks uh, out with the patrons, um, conducting what you might call reference by roaming. Um, most of the books were very old and many showed signs of damage by mold. Uh, there was no climate control in the building and the building was not also uh, ADA compliant. Uh, much was in disrepair, um, old furniture. Bathrooms had standing water, that kind of thing. Uh, they have a small book budget, so they were very happy to, to receive a gift of three books published by OSU Press that, uh, that Richard brought along um, pertaining to forestry and agriculture. Um, there are signs inside and outside of just about every room telling users to be quiet um, and also not to bring food and drink. Many students hung out, and uh, I, I found it interesting, hung out and studied in a lounge that was part of the library building but could only be entered from outside the library. And I assumed that the reason uh, it was so popular is that students are able to converse and work together in that room, whereas they're not able to do so in, within the, uh, 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 the rest of the library. If our if our host can uh, can change the uh, where uh, where the uh, attendees are displayed, um, I'd appreciate that rather than having to move the uh, move that each time a slide appears. Thank you. Um, we conducted a great deal of consultation and training while we were there. That was the main reason. Uh, for our, our going. Um, I gave an introduction on institutional repositories and Richard presented about metadata creation. Uh, we both sat at the head table with the library director throughout our presentations. Again, uh, quite formal. Um, there were very good questions that, uh, that followed each of our presentations. Um, and it seems that that's expected. Um, I'm sure Richard will talk about that as part of a, uh, or al already uh, has talked about that as part of our uh, experience in the co at the conferences, is uh, there's a lot of interaction uh, following each presentation. Uh, I remember mentioning to Richard that uh, I found it hard to engage people in kind of informal conversation about anything throughout our stay. Um, it was very hard to find out about their day-to-day -day lives aside from their religious practices, which they were very open about. Um, for example, at the presentation, I asked a question about what football team they rooted for, um, knowing that, uh, that soccer, football, is, is very popular there, uh, just to try and, and get them to open up a little bit. And the question was met with a, a great deal of surprise, I felt. Um, and I, I, was, I kind of felt like I shouldn't have asked that, uh, that type of question, informal question, uh, in that venue. Um, it was interesting to experience those kind of cultural differences. Main purpose, as I mentioned, of our visit was to provide training on, uh, on the Samvera open source institutional repository software. Um, that we installed on their server for them. Um, I provided training to the automation staff and, on the administration of the repository, repository workflows, and explained some of the system backend work uh, that they would need to do. And I provided um, cataloging training um, to cataloging staff. I taught them how to create a subject authority record for a vegetable crop grown widely in West Africa, known as fluted pumpkin. Um, it was not yet in LCSH. Um, and I found out in early March that the subject authority record that we had uh, created together was approved by LC. Next slide. So there was uh, a farewell gathering on the, our very last day. You can see Michael there wearing his, uh, his uh, suit that they had created for him. 
um, after they gave us uh, gifts, um, which w included um, uh, books and a FUNAB keychain and some other souvenirs. Um, and af after the gift giving, we all uh, went out to the front of the library for a photo op. Um, it was in the, um, I guess in the heat of the day, kind of mid afternoon. And um, I think every staff member wanted his or her picture taken with us. So we were out there for a very long time taking all sorts of um, different combinations of group uh, photos. Um, I also wanted to mention that, um, yeah, so Friday is, is the day that um, they wear their formal clothing to work. It's not a, a casual Friday kind of thing. Um, and so we, we wore our uh, suits that they had uh, tailored for us on, on that day. Um, they also said uh, during this, this final presentation, you know, at the end of our, our time there, that one of us had to remain, that we could not both go home. I think they really, they really appreciated our being there and um, they really were very, uh, very warm and friendly and uh, was really kind of uh, sad to be saying goodbye to those folks. Okay, next slide. So I want to talk a little bit about um, some of the culture there. Some of this we've already um, touched on. Um, it's a very formal society in some sense there. It's very important to uh, show respect. On one of our first days, uh, at the guest house, the electrician there demonstrated how important it was. He said that when he was growing up and even now as an adult, when he greets his father in the morning, he prostrates himself before his father. He gets down on his hands and knees and puts his forehead to the ground. Um, we saw this kind of thing, maybe not quite that dramatic, but um, whenever subordinates were uh, greeting dignitaries or superiors, I should say, um, they would not only address them as sir or ma, uh, but also would, if it was a, a woman, usually they would curtsy. Uh, if it was a man, uh, maybe um, uh, kneel uh, at least on one knee or, or at least bow somewhat uh, to greet other people. Similarly, at the conferences we attended, Officials and senior officers of the professional organizations were always called out for mention and welcomed. And also at the beginning of, of the conferences, um, these folks and others were called to the front to offer goodwill messages. And those messages basically just wished everyone to have a good uh, conference. I was surprised when I was asked to come to the front of the room and offer my goodwill. Uh, message. And of course, I'd never done that before. I'd never seen it done before, um, but I was invited as a visiting, um, you know, dignitary or whatever you want to call me. Um, anyway, it was interesting. I hope I rose to the occasion. I definitely rose to the occasion, but anyway. Um, and uh, as uh, Michael Allray mentioned there were opening and closing prayers uh, at the conferences and at other events uh, throughout the two weeks that we went to, usually one Christian and one Muslim prayer uh, at, at uh, each time. And then they also had the high table uh, with, or head table, I guess, at the front of the room. Uh, at the conferences, it really was a high table. I mean, it was a little bit higher than a normal table and the people sat behind it, you could almost only just see their, their uh, head and shoulders sticking up over the table, but it was a way of honoring the, the people who were um, um, considered uh, officials or dignitaries or uh, even the keynote uh, speakers there. So next slide. 
And I, I thought I'd just mention something that we noticed about the presentations at the conferences. The presenters often um, did things that I know in this country we would say never to do. For example, um, they read from their slides, the slides of which were usually fairly dense with text. Um, papers often consisted of surveys of published information with little originality. Uh, prevent, presenters also often ended up racing through their presentations because they weren't given enough time uh, to present in. I, I think with the amount of time that they had, uh, it was almost like doing um, uh, a, um, what do you call it, a lightning talk, but they didn't, they didn't, hadn't prepared for having that short amount of time. So they ended up racing through things a bit. There were Q and A periods after the presenters and usually the people who commented um, rarely asked questions. They often um, made what I would consider kind of nitpicky criticisms, often criticizing how the research was done and um, sometimes couched in scientific terms, but it didn't, it, it mostly seemed like uh, being kind of crabby about stuff. Um, anyway, it was very, um, kind of made, made us both cringe. Okay, and here's what you probably really want to know about, and that is what did we eat there? Um, so both Michael and I really liked the food that we had. As a vegan, I was a little worried at first, um, but uh, Nike was a very good host. Um, I think she had one of her staff people preparing our lunches for us. And so I always ate vegan food. Um, and some of the foods we ate are shown here. Um, you can see upper right is Moin Moin. Moin Moin is a uh, steamed bean pudding made from uh, beans and onions and pepper. Um, it's very protein rich and it's a uh, staple there. In the middle bottom is Amala with Agusi. Amala is that big white blob. Uh, it's, it can be made out of either yam or cassava flour. It's very bland but it's always served with stew, which in this case, in this picture is a goosey. A goosey is um, made out of ground and cooked melon seeds and also uh, leaves. Uh, I think what we were having was uh, corcoris leaves. It's a vegetable green that uh, we don't have in this country. Um, and so by, and, and that was usually heavily spiced. Actually, the Moin Moin was pretty spicy also. And then Dodo on the left there is um, fried plantain. And then the Chin Chin that you see there is a snack food that's uh, fried um, wheat flour. M most of the staple foods there are made from yam, cassava, or plantains. Um, Chicken, fish, and goat meat are often served. Goat is considered to be the best meat. We were never served any desserts or sweets. Um, I know that Michael especially enjoyed their pepper soup. Uh, everything, most everything was, was very spicy. We've already touched on many of these aspects of daily life in Nigeria. Um, well, it's important to mention, though, or, or emphasize the uh, um, how the lack of infrastructure is uh, hindering the development of the country, and it's mentioned by uh, by the people there uh, all the time, and it's obvious um, as a visitor. Um, electricity goes down all the time, uh, often uh, more than multiple times. Uh, multiple times a day um, and for lengthy periods of time. Uh, there was very poor Wi-Fi uh, both within the library and at the house where we stayed. Um, you would not dare drink the tap water, of course, um, or use it to wash your food or to brush your teeth. Um, water is either, either bottled or uh, sold in plastic bags uh, on the street uh, by presumably people who have boiled the water in their homes and uh, 
selling it uh, in that fashion. People hand wash all of their laundry. And uh, I think Richard and I both enjoyed this. Uh, it gave us something to do uh, while we were at the guest house um, in the evenings when we had no internet and, uh, and very limited uh, television options. The roads were, were quite an experience um, and a real uh, a shock, you could say, uh, when we arrived and, and traveled uh, the four hours from uh, from the airport to uh, Aviakuta. Um, this is what the roads look like along highways, both highways and any heavily trafficked road um, in Nigeria. Uh, we spent a lot of time in, in vehicles uh, because of the, uh, of, of the poor roads um, and how long it took to get places. Um, sometimes in the middle of the day, as in this photograph, um, without air conditioning and crammed into a van, I was very lucky to be in the front seat uh, next to a window. Richard was behind, behind me there, I think on the other side, and uh, was just soaked when we arrived at our destination, I remember. And, I, and anytime you were outside for any period of time, you, you were sweat soaked. This photo on the, on the right is a very typical street scene um, along any road in the, in the country uh, that's heavily trafficked. A couple more photos of, of roads and traffic, lots of, uh, lots of motorcycles. And as I mentioned, no lanes, no street lanes. So motorcycles could get places much more quickly. Car is good. It is a, an extraordinarily entrepreneurial culture, um, presumably due to a lack of jobs in the public and commercial spheres, but uh, um, the markets along many of the streets and highways and people selling um, uh, a wide variety of, uh, of goods, uh, food, liquids, um, snacks, uh, hats, um, chairs, um, just, just anything you can imagine. Uh, here's some photos of, of the guest house where we stayed um, on campus. Um, the, my, the highlight by far of my trip was getting to know uh, some of the staff at the guest house who were just, as, as Richard mentioned, uh, all of the people there were so warm and convivial and um, uh, I'm forgetting the word, sincere in their, um, uh, in their openness and generosity and just, um, it was, it was a real, um, it was a real privilege to be able to spend time with them, uh, in the evenings after, uh, after dinner. Um, I've forgotten this person's name, unfortunately. I don't know if Richard remembers, but anyway, she spent, uh, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, yes, of course. Um, she spent a lot of time with us uh, teaching, trying to teach us the language, the Yoruba language. Um, and uh, yeah, we got to, we, we got to the point where we could welcome people in the morning and, uh, and say hello and goodbye and, and those sorts of things, which was, which was nice. So just to kind of wrap up here with the last few slides, um, since we've come home from, uh, from, Nigeria. We've done a lot of um, reporting and presenting. Uh, these are all the different things that uh, we've done as a result of our trip, uh, including this presentation you can see there. Uh, there. There is an article in International Leads, which is the online newsletter of the ALA International Relations Roundtable. It's freely available if you want to see a couple more pictures and um, more text uh, about uh, our trip, you can read that there. Um, next slide. And since coming back, um, the Sister Library Committee at OSU has been reconstituted a couple months ago. Uh, we're in the process of renewing our MOU. The, our previous one is due to expire this coming September, so I'm hoping by summertime we can um, uh, get this new one approved by our administration and the FUNAB administration. Our goal is to bring some FUNAB st staff to OSU maybe uh, a year or two from now. Um, we'll see. We'll see where we can get funding. 
and of course providing ongoing support for their institutional repository and subject heading creation and anything else that we can do. So thank you very much and uh, we're available for questions. Um, and uh, Michael, just so you know, uh, I was told we can go past 350. So okay. excellent for another 10 minutes or so. So I think, I hope people can unmute themselves uh, or you can write in the chat box. Maybe while people are thinking of questions, I'll say one thing because the title of our presentation was sent in last October before we actually went on our trip. And it mentions Olumo Rock. And I want you to know, we never got to Olumo Rock. Um, the day that we were hoping to go there, uh, the hotel staff, the guest house staff would not allow us to leave. Um, and um, uh, because we didn't have permission to leave the premises to go uh, there, but Olumo Rock is a, a geologic um, formation in the center of the city. It's why the city is there. And I believe the name Abiokuta means under the rock or something of that sort. It was an ancient um, uh, religious site, uh, according to the, the local um, Yoruba religion before people started being converted or converting to Christianity and Islam. Um, and it's kind of the main, main attraction to go to there, but we couldn't get transportation and they wouldn't let us out. So um, the view from Olumo Rock will have to wait for our next visit, I guess. Okay. And being, oh yeah, okay. So um, I have family who are watching. They want me to show you my my outfit. I don't know if I you can see it that well. Um, I can show you. I don't know if I can. I, I like I like the design here on it. It's very pretty. Uh, it's I believe this is a form of batik. And um, I'm also being told. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell this. After we got to, um, after we, um, I think during the second week, they were still talking about my name being Chapon. And somebody at the library joked that in Oregon, we have Chapon White. And in Nigeria, in Abiokuta, they have Chapon Black. They thought that was very funny. And, and every time they said his name, it was always Chapon White. <laughs> yes, right. And, right. And, and there was much uh, um, uh, laughter. <laughs> yes, yeah. They were asking me if there was some connection between my family and that neighborhood. And of course, there, there is none. Yeah, I mean, and, and also I felt a little bit bad because um, the Chapon, the Sapon part of my name is actually originally was my wife's name before we com we married and combined them. So, and it's shortened from Saponitsky. So I, I don't think it has anything to do with Nigeria. Hi, uh, Richard and Michael. I, it was just a fascinating presentation. Um, it sounds like a wonderful trip, and you know, thank you for telling us about it. I was kind of curious about. Um, so Richard, with your presentation about, um, you know, RDA and looking forward to the future of what's, you know, what's ahead. Um, I'm kind of just curious what you learned about their current environment for cataloging. Um, like, are they using RDA? Are they, are they tracking on these things? I mean, how, what was that kind of discussion like in the follow up? Mm -hmm. I would say um, many of them, most of them uh, in the cataloging area, um, uh, know about RDA. I think um, at FUNAB itself, I think they're uh, more tuned into it than maybe some other places. At the, um, one of the conferences that we, we were at, um, 
somebody from elsewhere in Nigeria did a uh, presentation about knowledge of RDA and whether it had been adopted or not. Um, my recollection is that maybe, um, I think it was, uh, it was much more widely known about than adopted. Um, you know, they don't have the kind of um, history of, of shared cataloging that we have in this country. They don't have anything like OCLC. They do look to their national library in Lagos for uh, guidance and they um, do supply uh, like any original cataloging that they do at FUNAB. They send, I, I believe by uh, snail mail, they must do print stuff out and, and send it to uh, the national library to contribute to the national bibliography. But that's about the extent of things. Um, so when I describe, you know, how things operate here and about the program for cooperative cataloging and stuff of that sort, they, you know, it's their um, abilities at the moment to, to really participate in that kind of thing. Um, but I know when I sent them word that the fluted pumpkin, uh, uh, subject heading had been approved, and it it wasn't approved as fluted pumpkin. It's Telferia occidentalis. They LC decided that the the Latin name was more appropriate than the the English common name. Uh, but they were they were very excited to get that information and said that they would you know send other ideas uh, my way later. But I haven't heard anything yet, so. They may need some prompting. I, I have a feeling they are kept pretty busy just uh, maintaining what they can there with their cataloging. Cool, thanks. That's just fascinating. Thanks. Um, I saw a question is, at Richard um, about have, whether we've uh, done any Nigerian cooking since our return. I have personally uh, attempted to make pepper soup and uh, somewhat successfully, uh, I actually had to purchase uh, the leaves um, that are uh, uh, local to in, in Nigeria um, over Amazon and I received them and, uh, and it, it came out okay. Uh, so if you look up a pepper soup recipe, you'll see um, a call for something like scent leaves. And uh, doing some research on the internet, I was able to find the actual name of those leaves, which I'm blanking on at the moment. But uh, yeah, I love the, I love the food there. It was, uh, I enjoy spicy food. And uh, as Richard mentioned, it's, it is, tends to be quite, uh, quite zesty and, and hot and uh, well flavored. And I'll, I'll just mention that I did I did go out and get a um, uh, plantain and and uh, cooked it uh, once. Uh, I've had plantain before, um, and but it's been a long time, so I, I was kind of inspired to to do that. I have a book at home that I checked out of the OSU library on West African cooking, and they have recipes in there for moin moin and a few other things, but I. I haven't uh, really gotten into it. I would love to make some moin moin. I, I really enjoyed that. Um, there is, I did look up in, in Portland, uh, I think in North Portland, there's a, um, a West African restaurant and some of the foods that we talked about, I think are actually on the menu there. Um, so I'm also being asked, have you heard anything about how they are faring through the COVID-19 pandemic? So I, I know I reported on it a few weeks ago when, when our sister library committee met. Um, what I recall is that, um, yes, it is present there. Um, and uh, I think they're quite as far along as other places. I think the, the virus was slow to show up in, um, uh, in Nigeria. I, I know that I did get a uh, text message from one of our contacts there 
that was she was um, repeating uh, one of these uh, uh, mythic um, treatments for COVID-19. And so I wrote back to her, I said, this isn't true. You know, check your sources on, on this kind of stuff. Other than that, I, I really, I don't have details. I know they have some kind of a, uh, equivalent to the CDC that's trying to put out information. Uh, whether it gets out to everybody, I, I don't know. The last time I checked, which was probably more than a week ago, the highest incidence was in uh, the Southwest in the, uh, the Lego area. Lagos, by the way, is the biggest city I've ever encountered in my life. Um, I'm not sure. I think the population is only, well, I, I shouldn't say because I don't know for sure, but uh, uh, it occupies a vast uh, geographic area, the city does. Well, seeing no further questions, we thank you all for attending. And um, yeah, I, I don't remember how to say goodbye in, in Yoruba, unless you do, Michael. Gosh, oh no, I don't remember, no. Okay, well, whatever. <laughs> thank you all for, for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you, bye. Bye-bye.